Last year, there were 117,000 hospital admissions attributable to the DOACs or NOACs. Uh, that stands for New Oral Anticoagulants or Direct Oral Anticoagulants. And um, for the most part, for most of us, that means uh, Eliquis or uh, Rivaroxaban, um, Xarelto. There were also 2,000 deaths um, attributable to bleeding from these drugs, um, the NOAX, last year. So <clears throat> why are so many people taking them? Well, um, because that's less than half of the stroke-related deaths or, or strokes that uh, admissions that would be occurring. Um, <clears throat> One of the major uh, indications for these is atrial fib, uh, atrial fibrillation. I've done a, a, a large series of videos on atrial fibrillation. It is by far the most common um, cardiac um, dysrhythmia, problem with cardiac rhythm or heartbeat um, that you see. So, <clears throat> Obviously, stroke's a major uh, disabler and killer um, in the top five. Probably in the, it, it, uh, it competes with dementia in terms of being a, uh, the top disabler um, because so many people have had stroke and then remain disabled with stroke for decades. Uh, same thing with uh, dementia. You remain disabled uh, for decades with it. Stroke's also a major killer. <clears throat> so that's why you have so many people uh, with these uh, medications going into the ER. It's actually one of the major causes of, um, it, the uh, may be the major cause of serious drug-related um, side effects going into the emergency room as well. So that's why you have all of these folks taking these fairly dangerous drugs. Now, <clears throat> why don't they take um, the, old, the old medication, uh, warfarin or Coumadin? Well, many of you know, know that that's also used as rat poison. It's even more dangerous than, um, than the DOAX or NOAX, um, both in terms of all-cause mortality and in terms of bleeds. So if if warfarin and Coumadin are that much more expensive, then why are people taking that instead of the DOAX or NOAX? Well, because um, there's an antidote for warfarin and Coumadin. I have atrofib. What do I take? Um, Apixaban, Eliquis. I mean, um, I take Eliquis. The, um, <clears throat> why do I take it then? Uh, I just went over the reasons. Uh, warfarin is uh, significantly more dangerous in terms of bleeds. Uh, it's more difficult to manage. But again, I'll go back. It's significantly more dangerous. Now, <clears throat> in the midst of all of this uh, doom and gloom, there's, a, there's good news. Andexa, um, the antidote for the NOAX has been approved. It was approved three days ago by the FDA. Um, and it's, uh, these NOACs or DOACs work on factor 10A inhibitors. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a series on this to talk about how they work, why they work. Uh, but before I do, I'm gonna give you the bad news in the midst of this uh, discussion as well. And before that, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. And this is the Prevention Channel. We deal with the things that cause uh, death, disability um, in uh, our world, and um, we help you prevent them. We focus on lifestyle. Lifestyle is medicine, and um, for the for the vast majority of issues, including atrial fib, it's far more important to lose that 30 pounds if you need to lose it and to exercise and to eat correctly than it is to take any of these medications because uh, they just work better.
But <clears throat> many of us have to do both. And when you do, you need to know about the medication. So again, just a little bit more information about the new antidote for the factor 10 inhibitors. Uh, and DEXA. And again, many of you, are, uh, many of us watching this, uh, this channel are on uh, Rivaroxaban, um, Xarelto, or Eliquis. So uh, these are the medications that are available. This is, this is the uh, um, article that came out just a couple of days ago. There are 4 million people taking uh, factor 10 inhibitors. And again, major cause of 117,000 emergency divis uh, visits, what, half of them uh, ended up in admissions? No, 117,000 hospital admissions and 2,000 deaths. But again, <clears throat> sounds like terrible drugs, but they're a lot less terrible, a lot uh, safer than going with atrofib without um, protection from stroke. Here's the, here's the downside to this. It's an ex a significant step by uh, State Stuart Connolly. However, we've been waiting for this for over a year. They, got, uh, they tried to get this approved, what, back in 2015, then back in 2016. There's some approval that happened uh, three days ago, but look at this. They expect to launch Indexa in June. Again, we've been waiting for quite a while for this medication. Um, basically what they're saying, it's going to be early 2019, 2019 before it's readily available. So <clears throat> just like everything else, there's good news and there's bad news. Thank you for your interest. <clears throat>